I've just finished creating my setup, so I'm ready to start programming some operations. The first thing I'll need to do is face off the top of my stock, so I'll select a facing operation from the 2D operations section of my toolbar. Before I get into actually programming this operation, I want to point out the five tabs that are found here and in every operation in Fusion 360. The first tab is the Tool tab, where I'll select the tool I'd like to use and adjust the feeds and speeds if necessary. Next in the Geometry tab, this is where I'll typically pick which parts of the model I'd like to machine, effectively setting X and Y limits for the toolpath. Under Heights, I can limit the toolpath in the Z direction by setting a top and bottom height. I can also adjust the clearance and retract heights as needed. In the Passes tab, I'll control how the tool goes about cutting the material by specifying parameters like Step Over and Step Down. This tab typically varies the most from operation to operation. Finally, in the Linking tab, I'll control how the tool moves between cutting passes, including ramps. Now I'll go back and apply these tabs to define this facing operation. I'll select a tool, and notice that the dialog box that pops up is very similar to the one that I saw while creating my tool library. One important note is that Fusion applies filters when you're selecting a tool, so you may not see all the tools that are actually in the library. You can adjust this by clicking on the types of tools being shown and adjusting the filter or turning it off altogether. I'll select a face mill from a local library and hit select. I don't need to make any geometry selections, the heights are automatically set to stock top as the top height and model top as the bottom height, and I'm okay with the default passes and linking settings. So I can hit OK to generate the facing operation. Fusion shows me a preview right on top of the model, showing a model of the tool and the tool path, where blue lines indicate cutting moves, green lines are lead-ins, and yellow lines are retracts. Now I want to rough out the saw. And Fusion has two operations for this, 2D and 3D adaptive clearing. The adaptive algorithm maintains a constant radial load on the cutter through a constant engagement angle and user-specified optimal load to avoid load spikes that can cause tool breakage. Because of this constant load, I can cut with the whole flute of the tool, which distributes tool wear and increases cutter life. The key difference is that 2D adaptive clearing is selection-based and only works on prismatic areas, meaning it doesn't respect 3D surfaces. 3D Adaptive calculates directly off of the geometry, so it can be used on both prismatic areas and 3D surfaces. Because this saw is basically a big 3D surface, I'll start with a 3D Adaptive Clearing. It's in the 3D Operations dropdown and is also already in my toolbar. I'll go through the five tabs just like in the facing operation. For a more in-depth look at programming Adaptive Clearing operations, check out the in-depth adaptive clearing video. For the tool, I'll select the bullnose end mill in this document library. I don't need to make any geometry selections, so I'll jump right to the heights tab. I'm happy with the default clearance and retract heights, but because of the previous facing operation, I can set my top height to model top, and I know I only want to cut down to the flat part of the mold, so I'll set that as the bottom height. Under Passes, I'll set my optimal load to be 30% of the tool diameter by right-clicking and selecting Edit Expression. I can set the new value as the default for every new 3D adaptive by right-clicking and selecting Make Default. I also want to adjust the maximum roughing step-down. I can enter a value or use the same Edit Expression option to set it to the tool flute length. I want stock to leave on so that I have an even amount of excess material to remove with finish passes. Finally, in the linking tab, I have some stay down options. I'll turn the maximum stay down distance up to 20 inches since this is a large part, set the clearance to a tenth of an inch, and set the stay down level to 80%. These settings are going to allow Fusion to calculate a safe 3D path while repositioning while maintaining a clearance of at least a tenth of an inch from any obstacles. Finally, I'll turn up the no engagement feed so that these stay down moves really help me save time. Now I'm ready to hit OK and let this 3D adaptive generate. I've cleared out all the material above the flat surface, but I have this pocket at the front of the saw that still needs to be roughed out. Since this is prismatic, I can use a 2D adaptive clearing. I'll choose it from the toolbar and I can see that Fusion remembered my previous tool choice, 
so I'll move on to the Geometry tab. Here I can see I am required to make a pocket selection, because 2D Adaptive is selection-based. I'll select the bottom contour of this open pocket, and the two open edges on these shoulders. In the Heights tab, I'll adjust my top height to be the flat face I machined down to in the 3D Adaptive Clearing, and make sure my bottom height looks good. Under Passes, I need to set the optimal load just like in the 3D Adaptive, but there is no automatic roughing step down. If I want to take multiple steps, I need to enable multiple depths and set my maximum step down manually. Finally, in linking, I have the exact same options for the stay down. I'll hit OK, and my 2D adaptive generates. To see what I've removed so far, I'll run a stock simulation by selecting the setup, right clicking, and selecting Simulate. For a more comprehensive look at stock simulations, check out the in depth stock simulation video. I'll hit the play button at the bottom of the screen, and for the sake of time, I'll skip to the end of the toolpath. I can see that I cleared out the saw and the stair effect that was left behind by the fine step down. Looks like I'm ready to clean this up with some finishing operations.